Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be making the Yellow Soul, which as you can see here is able to shoot these projectiles and even destroy some of the enemy attacks. But before we get into that, we have another glitch. Ah. Okay, so here's the problem. As you can see right now the heart is not moving and when we move it is set to moving, that's good. Now, what happens if I press both right and left at the same time? Now, when that happens, the heart doesn't move in either direction. But watch what happens to this variable. As you can see, the heart isn't moving, but we're taking damage. And the same thing happens if I press up and down at the same time. So these two move blocks are both pulling the heart in opposite directions and that way the heart doesn't move but unfortunately our moving variable is getting confused and our blue attacks are not working correctly. Now to fix this go to your heart sprite and look for your move xy key code. Now let's move this where we've got some space underneath because we are going to need to add some code into here. Okay, so we're setting the moving variable to yes right here. We need to put something around that to prevent this problem. Let's start off with an if then and inside this if then let's check which direction we're moving. So let's get out an equals operator and we'll check to see if the key input is up arrow. Now if we're pressing the up arrow, as long as we're not also pressing the down arrow, then we can set moving to yes. So let's get out a not key down arrow pressed. And then just get out an and, put our not key down arrow and key equals up arrow into the and, put that back inside the if, there we have it. Now all we need to do is copy this for each of the four directions. So right click on this if and put this right here. Let's change this to down arrow. Now change this down arrow to up arrow. Now let's copy both of these and we'll change this one to left arrow. Make sure this is right arrow. Then change this one to right arrow and this one to left arrow. So make sure that each of these is the opposite. So left and right, then right and left, down and up, up and down, and make sure you've spelled all of this correctly. And once we're done with that, let's give it a test. Okay, moment of truth time. So we're not moving and the moving variable is set to no. That's all good. We move around, it's set to yes. We collide with the box, it's set to no. And then if I press both up and down at the same time, you ready? And it's still set to no. All right, let's try it left and right down at the same time. And it's still set to no. Okay, problem solved. Now, to be honest, I think this is a bit of a clumsy solution, but it works. That's the main thing. If you can think of a better way to solve the glitch, I would love to hear it. Let me know in the YouTube comments if you can think of a more elegant solution to this bug. But with that out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff and let's create our yellow soul. Now first of all, let's review how our blue soul movement and our red soul movement work. For the moment, our blue soul movement only runs if our costume name is blue and the same with our red soul movement. Now up till now this has been fine, but honestly we probably shouldn't be relying on just the costume to figure out what types of movement we should be using. We should probably have a variable to have better control of switching between different types of souls. So let's go to variables and let's click on make a variable. Let's call this soul. Now click for all sprites because we want to be able to change the soul variable from all different types of sprites like the attack sprite. Then press OK. And let's update our red soul movement. Let's take out this costume name and let's put in soul variable. So if soul equals red, then we do the red soul movement code. Let's also make sure that we switch the costume to the correct costume, switch costume to red. And this, when I receive red soul broadcast, we shouldn't need anymore. So you can get rid of the whole thing, but if you do that, then you've got to make sure that you find 
broadcast red soul in your attack code and every time you've used broadcast red soul you need to replace that with a set soul variable to red otherwise if you don't want to have to do with that right now just get rid of this switch costume and instead set soul to red now let's do the same thing with our blue soul movement okay get rid of this costume name and replace it with a soul variable Let's also make sure that we are switching the costume to the blue soul. Put it right here underneath the if soul equals blue. Then we've got to update our when I receive blue soul. Here it is. Well, we shouldn't need this switch costume to blue anymore. And unlike the when I receive red soul, we do actually need this code here to point in the direction and set the jumping and the velocity correctly. So we can get rid of this switch costume to blue, but we should set soul to blue connect this back up again and the broadcast blue soul code which is usually wrapped up in the gravity slam attack can just stay as it is we'll leave this here as well now one thing we need to make sure that we do is set what soul we are at the beginning of the game so look around for when green flag clicked and let's set soul to red and there's one more thing we need to do. Let's go and have a look at our death and invulnerability code. Now, underneath if player current HP less than one is all of our death code. It switches the costume to the broken heart and then cycles through the other broken hearted animations. The problem is, is that now that we've got our red soul movement and our blue soul movement running, depending on what soul variable you've got, that's going to interfere with this animation. So we've got to make sure that underneath if player current HP less than one, We've got a set soul to dead. Okay, once we've got that in, we actually don't need this switch costume to red anymore. So I'm gonna throw this out. It's not a problem if you keep it there. So this bit is optional. But personally, I always prefer to delete code that I don't need anymore. And next, let's create a new costume for our yellow heart. Go to the costumes tab and let's right click on red and duplicate it. We'll call this costume yellow. I'll change this color to 17, I think is a nice yellow. And then when you select the heart, hold down the shift button on your keyboard before you press this rotate button. And then you should be able to turn the heart into this direction. Well, that was nice and easy. Let's create some code for our yellow soul movement. Now I'm going to copy the code from define red soul movement. So just right click here and move all this down somewhere where we've got some space underneath it. Let's click on my blocks and make a block and we'll call this yellow soul movement. Press OK, get your define yellow soul movement, put it here. You want to switch the costume to yellow and if soul equals yellow. Now the rest of this looks perfect, exactly what we want. All we need now is the ability to shoot those bullets we saw. So let's click on make a block and we'll call this block shoot. Press OK, put define shoot somewhere where you've got some space underneath it and make sure we put in a shoot block into our define yellow soul movement. Now, if you've made any games like Space Invaders or spaceship shooting games before, this code is probably going to be pretty familiar to you. Now, the first thing that we need to do is create a variable that controls how rapid fire our bullets will shoot. I'm going to call this variable the reload variable. And we can click for this sprite only and press OK. Then get out an if then else. And we want to check to see if our reload variable is more than zero. Now, the reload variable is going to be a number, and if it is zero, that means we can fire. But if it's more than zero, that means we are still reloading. So if it is more than zero, we want to change the reload variable by minus one, so that we are slowly recharging our ability to fire. But then, when our reload variable does hit zero, we get to put in our bullet creation code here. So what button do you want to press in order to fire the bullets? I'm going to make it Z, so let's get out an if Z button pressed. Now once we do fire a bullet, we need to reset our reload. So let's set reload to six. I quite like six. 
If you make this a longer number, then there will be a longer pause in between you shooting bullets. And if you set it to a shorter number, then you'll be able to fire a lot more rapidly. So experiment with this number, come up with something that you like and that you think is balanced. And then we just need to create the clone of the bullet. So we need to create a new sprite. Go to the bottom right corner, click on paint a sprite. And let's call this yellow bullet. Now, once we've named this sprite, before we forget, let's make sure that the code is finished and that we create a clone of yellow bullet right here. And also, before we forget, have a look for your define evade code. Notice anything missing? We've got to make sure that there's a yellow soul movement right here. Okay, that's all the code we should need for our heart sprite. Let's create a costume for our yellow bullet and then put the code inside our yellow bullet sprite. I'm just going to drag my yellow bullet sprite so you guys can see it a bit better. There we go. And then I'm going to make a little circle that's yellow. And then I'm going to use this tool here to create a point on the bottom. And then with this point selected, you can change it from curved to pointed. And now we have this cool bullet shape. Now this looks like it's way too big, so let's squeeze this, make it a bit smaller and a bit narrower. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That seems like a good size. And make sure, of course, that it's in the center as well. I think we're ready to add in the code. First thing we need is when green flag clicked, hide. And we'll also point this bullet upwards. We could just change the Y of the bullet to make the bullets go up, but I like the idea of using move steps in case you would want to do anything clever like shooting the bullets sideways using some more complicated code. But now that I've decided that, I should also make sure that the costume of the bullet is pointing in this direction. Make sure it's pointing right, otherwise it will be pointing in the wrong direction when we come to do the rest of this code. Okay, so next we need to get out a when I start as clone. Let's send these bullets to the front layer. And when they start, they need to make sure that they go to the heart. And seeing as we are hiding the original bullet, we need to make sure that the clones show themselves. Okay, now we want these bullets to move until they touch the edge. So let's get out a repeat until touching edge. And how fast do we want them to move? I think moving nine steps is a good speed, but feel free to experiment with some different numbers if you like. Then once the bullet reaches the edge, we need to make sure that we delete the clone. Okay, let's give this a test. Go to your attack sprite, look around for if mode equals evade, move all this code out for now, and let's just set soul to yellow. Okay, our soul is set to yellow. Let's see if we can fire. Awesome. All right, now let's see if we can code these bullets to destroy projectiles. Go back to your yellow bullet sprite. Okay, so underneath this move nine steps, let's get out if touching our attack sprite, we'll set the brightness to 100. Then we'll wait 0.05 seconds and delete this clone. This will make it so that when our yellow bullets collide with any of our attack clones, they will flash white for a second, just a split second in fact, then delete themselves. Why do we have this little wait in here? Well, aside from this cool kind of last flash animation that they do, it also makes sure that there's enough time for the attack clones to register the fact that a yellow bullet has touched them before the yellow bullet deletes itself. And this is important because the next bit of code we want to put in is about the attacks deleting themselves once they have been touched by a yellow bullet. Now, one thing we should do before we move on to that though, is go into one of your other sprites, maybe the health bar, and get out a when I receive screen shake. Drag that into your yellow bullet code, just to make sure that your yellow bullets also get affected by the screen shake. And now it's time to make sure that the attacks are destroyable by the yellow bullets. Head across to your attack sprite and look around for heart collision, define heart collision. 
Now, right underneath define heart collision, we're going to put in another if then. If touching yellow bullet, let's do a cool fade out animation. Repeat five, change ghost effect by 20. And then after that, delete this clone. And this will make it so that all of your attacks, all of them, can be destroyed by shooting them with yellow bullets. But if you're like me, you only want some of your attacks to be destroyed. So for my game, I'm going to make it so that only yellow attacks can be destroyed by yellow bullets. So we just need to wrap this if touching yellow bullet with an if color equals Y. Connect that up, and there we have it. Now, if you are going to create yellow attacks that can be shot by yellow bullets, don't forget to make the costumes and remember what we call them. I'm going to just make this bone Y for now. And here's some test code here to make sure that I'm in the yellow soul mode and I've got a mixture of white attacks and yellow attacks to deal with. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, this is very cool. So if I get any of the yellow attacks, excellent, I'm able to shoot them. But these white attacks are completely impervious to my yellow bullets. Very cool indeed. Now a few little bits of tidying up we should probably do. This define heart collision is no longer just about colliding with the heart because we can also collide with the bullets in this code. So I'm going to rename this into collision. And you might have also noticed that you can be the yellow heart inside the menu mode. So if you want to fix that, all you need to do is go to your heart sprite, look for define menu, and right underneath it, make sure that you switch the costume to red. And then that way, when you start the game, you always are the red heart inside the menu. And that's all the time we have for this week. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas. Oh,